has been active in the international payments and banking technology space in the US and Europe for two decades as part of companies like First Data and Wirecard. Currently, he is a partner at Speed Invest, an early stage venture fund based in Vienna. Welcome to Stefan Klestiel. Very well pronounced, thank you very much. So um, it's amazing how complicated mobile payments are if you think about it. Um, I mean, you did a great job explaining it. So now that we figured out how it works, we actually need to get the customers to use it, right? Um, which is also quite challenging. So very happy to be here. It's my first time to be at the summit. Um, it's been already really interesting chatting with the uh, former Estonian prime minister who I think is a real hero, and um, we've just invested into an Estonian company. I've become an e-resident of Estonia. They have a CTO of the government. It's pretty amazing what's happening there, so um, really cool. Um, who are we? Speed Invest, we're an early stage fund, uh, early stage venture fund uh, based out of Vienna. Uh, we do digital uh, across Europe. Um, and um, we haven't done anything in Bulgaria yet. That's probably why I'm here. Um, we've invested in countries like Turkey, um, Slovenia. Um, so that's the closest we get. So we come from the north and south. And hopefully very soon we'll do stuff here. Um, I have done a lot of angel investing in fintech. And then together with Speed Invest, and now as a partner of Speed Invest, uh, we recently closed um, 60 million uh, in the first round. We're going to do a bit more until summer and uh, invest about a quarter into fintech. Um, we have a really cool portfolio, um, for instance, number 26, which is, I'm sure Konstantin knows, they are uh, out of Berlin. Very proud that Peter Thiel, who I'm sure many of you know, has um, decided to invest uh, 10 million euros into this business future of uh, mobile banking. Um, we've um, invested into a company called EasyCo in Turkey. It's already the leading payment gateway uh, uh, in Turkey. And uh, into a very cool company called Holvi, which is a fairly revolutionary SME banking play out of Helsinki. And there'll be lots more. Okay. So the topic of today, uh, fintech roller coaster, what to look for in great seed, seed stage fintech investment opportunities and what not, I guess, to look for or rather what to avoid. So let me try to um, talk about this a bit. I mean, roller coaster, you know, I've been in Bulgaria already 11 years ago um, as a consultant. I was advising uh, Bank Austria at the time, which was not yet Unicredit to integrate Birkim Banker. I don't know if that logo even exists anymore. So that's a very long time ago, uh, old school banking, that's where I come from. I've changed sides to work with some really exciting companies now. And it is a roller coaster. So uh, a partner colleague of mine, he, um, he likes to say that um, he is driven by startups during the day and um, he is awake at night because of the startups. Yeah. So it is a roller coaster up and down, and um, um, so let's take a, a, a little bit of a, look, a closer look at this. You're going to probably think, so this guy's going to tell us where to invest in fintech. I'm actually not going to tell you where to invest because I think nobody needs a lot of investment advice here. I mean, there is disruption going on in every vertical of fintech today, uh, be it in trading or uh, current accounts. Uh, cards, payments, um, currencies, of course, cryptocurrencies, insurance. Uh, I think personally, I'm very disappointed about insurance. There's not that much going on. I think there should be a lot more going on. There will be a lot more going on. So I think it doesn't even matter. You just take, pick, take your pick. Um, there is disruption and there's opportunity for startups in all these areas. Why? Uh, it's pretty simple. <coughs> Uh, the existing players, the incumbents, uh, just cannot handle technology in a very fundamental way. 
Um, apologies to my uh, speaker beforehand. You, you obviously know your technology extremely well, but uh, in the way technology is used nowadays, in the way uh, it is used to very quickly uh, and flexibly ship products in a very fundamental way, typically banks and other financial institutions uh, f uh, just don't have the ability for various reasons uh, to do the same. Of course, with exceptions. There's some great stuff happening also with banks, obviously. Customer experience, typically startups are a lot better in figuring out uh, usability, um, cool design, UX, are typically a lot better than the incumbents, and that is very important today. And um, finally, and this is the, 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 the bit I feel bad for, actually, with the banks, there's, there's no chance. They're just tied down by regulation. There's more and more regulation being um, thrown at them. Um, and, um, of course, legacy, just uh, an enormously large uh, infrastructure that um, needs to be maintained um, and takes a lot of time. I just felt we need another picture here. This is actually a very cool partner colleague of mine, Michael Breitenbrücke. He's founder of Last FM, which some of the old internet junkies might still remember. Um, and um, uh, I think it's just a great picture of him. So, <laughs> 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 um, so why have you know? So what? What's the point? Is fintech any different from other startup verticals? Why is fintech special in this sense? So I would say, on the one hand, it's not different uh, in the sense that at the end of the day, it's all about traction. Yeah? So you are a startup, uh, you get your uh, MVP out, uh, you do a pilot, then you go into the market. And at the end of the day, if you don't uh, achieve traction, it's not going to go very far. And this is true not just for B2C, this is very much also true for uh, B2B. And now you could argue, well, what about team? Isn't the great team important? Well, yes, of course. But even if you have the best team uh, and you don't have traction, it becomes very hard. Now, with a great team, you have a chance to pivot the whole thing. You, you know, a great team is able to very quickly try other um, uh, product market fits. And we have seen actually at Speed Invest this really work, one of our best exits called Spock, it's like a flea market app, was something completely different. We pivoted it really last minute and, and it worked. It really worked and this is mainly thanks to uh, a, a fantastic founder team. Uh, the thing with traction is, I, don't th I have not figured this out, maybe others have, you just can't predict traction. It's extremely, I mean, it's impossible, I think. Um, so even with a fa what you can point out is if you think it's not a great team. I, I think that you can see pretty quickly, especially as you go into the due diligence process, you get to know each other. You can see, okay, this is maybe an okay team, but it's not a great team. But with traction, you just don't know. Why is FinTech maybe different from other verticals uh, in uh, early stage investing? It's a regulated business. Of course, there's other also regulated verticals. But this is very, very fundamental. If you start a fintech business, um, it is regulated. So what does it mean? You typically have a choice, uh, and it's a difficult choice, to either say, I'm going to partner with a licensed institution, a bank, or an asset manager, or insurance company, or I'm going to try to get the license. Both are actually very difficult to partner with an incumbent I mean, any one of you who has tried to sign a contract with a bank, a commercial contract, knows what it means. It's just extremely hard. It takes a long time. It goes through many investment committees, etc. Then you have to get the bank to integrate your service, which again can take forever. Um, and so not necessarily you're much faster than getting a license yourself. Now, getting a license also takes time, um, and it is actually very expensive. So Holvi is a regulated uh, payment institution, uh, you actually need to keep quite a lot of money uh, on your balance sheet. In any rate, it means longer runway. So if you invest into fintech, I think it automatically means longer runway, more money in the first round, more money in the second round, etc. So I'm sure, I think Oli Samer might, might agree to that. Yeah. Another cool partner of mine, of course, she's, she's female, uh, women in VC business, 
still very, very rare. We need to change that. Marie-Hélène Amitsreiter, fantastic partner from of mine. So, what to avoid? What can you avoid? What is important to avoid? Uh, this is very personal, is my view. I have made the experience that it's not a great idea to invest into pure export teams. You have seen from previous speakers, I mean, payments just as one of many verticals, right? There's lending, there's insurance, many others. Very often uh, requires deep expertise. And so you every once in a while run into a team that comes from those uh, areas. And it is very um, uh, intriguing um, to invest into those teams because they actually know what they're saying. They know the industry. However, my experience was that those people are typically not very good founders. Yeah? I hope I'm not um, uh, you know, being um, uh, bad with anyone. Uh, and that really good founders can learn any industry and any expertise. It is possible. I've seen like Valentin Maximilian from number 26, they had no clue about this payments and cards and they learned just very, very quickly um, within a short period of time. And they are sort of fresh in their head and they can still challenge uh, whatever is out there. What to look for, again, this is something I don't want to give you, I, I want to give you something a bit personal, a bit different from what you maybe have heard from other venture capital firms. We are all former entrepreneurs ourselves. We have all started businesses. We have all failed, actually, and we've all made exits. So we are very close to our founders. We don't, we don't see ourselves as financial engineering, engineering um, and just letting the founders do whatever they want. We actually are very close to them. What does it mean? Um, there is typically, I find, what works extremely well is if the founder and the investor makes an emotional investment uh, mutually uh, in each other. This sounds very like touchy-feely, but it's actually very real. Um, if you uh, have gone through the first two years of a startup, I mean, everything happens. Uh, all the unexpected things happen. Uh, you might change your business model. You, you might change uh, parts of the team. Um, you might almost run out of money and so forth. There's a lot of ups and downs. So if there is mutual respect and trust between founder and investor, that is so important to survive um, this first year or two. Um, so for me personally, that's how I operate anyway. Uh, a lot of emotional investment and, um, um, you know, uh, in good times and bad times uh, also, because um, there also are sometimes bad times. And uh, that doesn't necessarily mean as an investor, I just drop, drop the company. It is always, I think, worth to uh, try very hard, like you would with a friend, to really try to find other solutions as hard as you can. And at the end, it's about the founders. So great fintech founders, that's what it's all about. That's all behind the success. On the left, you see Maximilian Valentin from number 26. On the right, you see um, uh, Barbara Rosentassin from Isico who actually grew up in Germany. We knew each other, we talked about this. They moved with their families to Turkey, which was not so easy, it took a lot of risk. And you know, three years later, we're now doing a $6 million round for them and it's looking really fantastic. So thank you very much. And uh, yeah, looking forward. <laughs>